Okay, so today we're going to do the moles and mass lab. So for this lab, we're going to be calculating uh, the amount of moles and atoms uh, for each one of these substances that we have up here. And in order to do that, we need to take the mass. That's where we start. So we're going to use a digital scale here. And uh, this is called a weight boat. So we're going to put our substance in the weight boat. So the first thing we have to do is we have to uh, zero out the scale. So I put the weight boat on. Uh, I hit zero quickly and zero it out. For the next step, we're going to be using one teaspoon um, of each one of these substances. So for example, I will take uh, the first substance, the sodium chloride, and I will take one teaspoon of the substance and put it in the weight boat and record the mass. So for the mass of the sodium chloride, I have 8.81 grams. For the next substance, and again, we'll make sure that we zero out the scale for the weight boat. For the next substance, we have sodium bicarbonate. So here's sodium bicarbonate. Take one teaspoon of the substance. And we see that we have 11.55 grams of the substance. For the next one, we're going to take water just plain water. So again, we'll zero the scale and we'll take one teaspoon of liquid water. And we have 3.47 grams. And finally, we're going to take some sodium, uh, calcium carbonate. Again, we'll zero the scale. And it's important to zero the scale each time you do this because each one of these weight boats uh, could be slightly different. So it's not enough to just do this once. You want to do it each time you do it. Okay, so here is some calcium carbonate. Carbonate. And we have 9.79 grams of the substance. Okay. Now, what we need to do is calculate the molar mass. And remember, the molar mass is the GFM. And to calculate the GFM, we need to find the mass of the sodium and the mass of the chlorine. And remember, to find the mass, we simply go to the periodic table. So we look for the mass of sodium, which is, we round that up to 23 and the mass of the chlorine, which we round up to 35. So this would be 23, and this would be 35. Now, to get the GFM, we simply add those numbers together. So GFM, the gram formula mass, is the mass of the entire formula. So 23 plus 35 gives us 58 grams. That is the molar mass. Now, we need to calculate the moles. And to calculate the moles, we're going to use the mole formula. So the mole formula is on your reference table right there. So the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the GFM. So the molar formula is the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the GFM. M, which again is known also as molar mass. So we simply plug that into this formula here, right? So that's the formula that we're going to be using. So we take the mass, which was 8.81 grams, and we divide it by the GFM, which was 58. And we plug that into our calculator, 8.81 divided by 58, and this gives us 0 0.15, and we'll say 2 moles. Now, we have to figure out the moles of each element. In other words, how many moles do we have of Na, and how many moles of Cl? So, in this case, the number would be the same. We have 1.152 moles of this and 0.152 moles of this as well. And then finally, the number of atoms for each one of these. To figure out the number of atoms, we're going to use Avogadro's number up here. So the number of atoms 
is um, we just take the moles times that number, and that would give us the number of um, atoms. So for the sodium, we're going to take the 1.52. And since chlorine is the same, so sodium and chlorine, 1.52 times um, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay. So we're going to do the same for both. I'm going to use this calculator since this is one that we use in the classroom. Uh, we're going to take 0.152 times 6.02 double E23. And this tells me I have 9.5 times 10 to the 22 atoms. So that's this number of atoms for each one of those elements. So I have 9.15 times 10 to the 22 atoms of sodium and 9.15 times 10 to the 22 atoms of chlorine. Okay, so for, next, for each one you just follow the same steps and uh, to solve this. Okay, and then on the back, again, you just have some problems that you have to solve. And here are some of the useful formulas that you can use for this lab.